It's our good fortune that by the grace of our spiritual master, Sridhar Prabhupada, we have come to a very historic place in our Gaudiya Vaishnava tradition, uh, the city of Jaipur. Of course, Jaipur, with all its charm and all its beauty, it's very uh, popular with tourists who come from all over the world. It's sometimes called the pink city. There's, uh, or there used to be, partially there still is a wall around the city, and uh, it's been painted a pinkish or a saffron color. But for Vaishnavs, Vaishnavis, it has special significance, Jaipur. Um, well, its very name indicates. Uh, Jaipur means the city of victory. Pur or Puras indicates a village or a town, and Jai means victory. Like we say, Param, Param Vijayate Shri Krishna Sankirtan. All glory is to the uh, victorious Sankirtan movement of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So, city of victory, in what sense? Actually, this city was constructed wholly and solely to begin with to protect um, the deities of Sri Rupa Goswami, uh, Sri Radha Govinda, and other Vrindavan deities as well, like Radha Gopinath, and Radha Damodar. Radha Vinod, these deities are also very popular here. But uh, as we've discussed and mentioned before in these videos, uh, there were foreign invasions into this country beginning a thousand years ago, actually. Going on for some time, actually India was conquered uh, by Muslim for hundreds of years, the British ruled here, etc. And in these invasions, particularly the Muslim invasions, the deities, uh, were in danger. They were destroyed, the temples were destroyed. So in one particular invasion uh, in the 1700s, uh, the deities of 
Vrindavan were attacked and temples were attacked. The devotees received notice of this eminent attack just in time. So many or most of the deities of Vrindavan were removed very quickly overnight. And the three principal deities of Vrindavan, you could say, of course, there's seven principal temples in Vrindavan, but in our Gaudiya Vaishnava tradition, we, we first approached Madan Mohan to become freed from desire. We approach Govinda Dev to engage in his service and purify our senses so we can serve him in unalloyed devotion. And then we approach Gopinath and we serve him in the mood of the Brajabhasis, pure unalloyed love. So Madan Mohan, Govindaji, and Gopinath, these deities, the focus was on those deities. They were removed from Vrindavan and they went first to Radhakund, where they were served for seven years. A rumor got out that they were there, so the invaders wanted to come and harm them, so they were taken to Kamyavan. And from Kamyavan, they were, well, again, they were in peril, so the devotees were thinking, where did take the deities to protect him. So one king, one Rajput king here in Rajasthan, uh, this part of India, the kings were known as being very good Rajrishis, devotees to the Lord and very powerful personalities. One king, Jai Singh, I believe it was the first or second, he um, offered to give protection to these Vrindavan deities, to Madan Mohan, to Govindaji and to Gopinath. So it took some time, months or perhaps a year or more. The deities were moved secretly from Kamyavan down here to this like, like a desert-like region, you could say, uh, Rajasthan. And they were received by the Raj Jai Singh um, in Amber. Yesterday our Purkama party visited Amber. Beautiful palace, beautiful fort. And the deities were safely brought to that place. Over time, different de deities arrived at different times, but particularly Gobindaji was given shelter there. And the king, after some time, he said, you're the Lord, Gobindaji, Radha Govinda. You deserve a proper accommodation and protection. So I will build a city for you. And you will be protected in that city from any invasions. So it took some time that the king built Jayapur, a city of victory, meaning that the victory was that the deities were protected. And um, Jai Singh constructed the city in such a way that the temple at that time, and to some degree even today, that temple is right in the center of Jaipur. <laughs> and the king, he uh, built his residence, some, maybe 100 meters from, from the temple, and he built his residence in such a way that when he woke up in the morning, he'd take his bath and do his various rituals, and he'd walk out onto the porch, and he could look directly into the temple and see Radha Govinda. This is a real king who, who rules in such a way as to make sure people prosper materially, because that's required, so one can be peaceful to worship Krishna. But he also is concerned about people's spiritual welfare. In Vedic times, the kings would tax the people to perform yagyas, because yagyas cost a lot of money <laughs> to perform properly. He'd perform yagyas for the prosperity of society. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, in the beginning I sent forth generations of men and demigods and blessed them that by the performance of yagya, all desirable things will be achieved. So what is a yagya really? You could say a yoga means thank you. It's a way of acknowledging the mercy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So kings like Jai Singh, the first, the second, and so forth, their succession, these were Rajarishis and they, they um, were Christian conscious. So Jai Singh built the city, he built a, a, a big wall around the city, and the deities have been protected ever since. This is some 300 odd years ago and uh, no one is able to harm uh, Govinda. Of course, no one can harm Govinda, <laughs> Krishna, but he gives us the service, so many different types of services, and one service is to protect him. <laughs> so as a result, these deities, eventually Gopinath came as well, he has a beautiful temple. Uh, Madan Mohan came, but eventually went to Karoli, that's another 
story, another pastime Crowley is a, a, a city some distance away from here. Um, Radhavino, the deities of um, Lokanath Goswami are here, and little Damodar. He had to leave Vrindavan as well. Uh, Damodar is the deity of Srila Jiva Goswami, and that deity was carved by Srila Rupa Goswami. Rupa Goswami carved the deity and gave it as a present to Jiva Goswami. So very significant, especially this month. This is the month of Damodar, this is Kartik. So our, our Parikama party of three, almost 350 devotees, we're relishing going to these different temples and taking shelter of these deities. And if you think about it, it's quite amazing. These deities who were, for the most part, were established by Brajranam, the great grandson of Krishna, 5,000 years ago, rediscovered by the six Goswamis of Vrindavan 500 years ago, one would naturally think that they should stay in Vrindavan, which is a good uh, four-hour drive from here, another state, UP. So the history is they were moved here for particular reasons, so why not take them back? You could say they're Vrindavan deities, and they were worshipped with great devotion by the Brajavasis. So how is it that after several hundred years they remain here? Well, all you have to do is go to the Mongol Arti in the Radha Govinda temple, the main temple in the city, to see how much devotion the people of this city have for Radha Govinda. And when I first came here in the early 70s, I was just, I mean, I was just amazed. The first time I walked into that temple, Mongol, I came a little early and I'm ready to see the, the, the door open. Thousands and thousands and thousands of people suddenly streaming in, singing so many devotional songs from the heart. They have a group of men in the back who, you know, have been singing, <laughs> all the tradition of singing for hundreds of years, so much devotion, and you just feel the atmosphere is electric with, with bhav, with devotion to the deity. And they keep streaming, actually they have built, made the temple even bigger, but even now it can hardly accommodate the thousands of people who come. Literally thousands and thousands of people come every morning before they go to work, before they go to school, before they, whatever their activities at home are, everyone, not everyone, but a good amount of the people of Jaipur, they come to see the Lord. That's our tradition. It's called shamskara. Shamskara means something that makes a deep impression in one's heart. So if you begin your day by seeing the Lord in His deity form, by chanting His holy names, by hearing His glories from the Srimad Bhagavatam, and finally tasting the foodstuffs that have been offered to him in love and devotion, prasadam, it creates a shamskar, a deep impression in your heart. So when you go out in the world to work, as we have to do, it's difficult to forget Krishna. Of course you're working, but in the back of your mind, in your heart of hearts, you're offering all that work to the Lord because you had that deep impression in the morning. And perhaps because of the nature of that hard work during the day and being in contact with the material energy, you need a boost. We see the people here in Jaipur, they come back, the same thousands and thousands and thousands, I could say tens of thousands, they come back to see Govindaji, Radha Govinda, or Radha Gopinath, or Radha Vinod, Radha, in the evening. So impressive to see a whole city Krishna conscious. We want to make our home Krishna conscious, we want to make our congregation Krishna, when, when, Krishna conscious. When you see a whole city, this Krishna conscious. So therefore, therefore our spiritual master Prabhupada came here. He brought his uh, disciples here and in the 70s to see for their spiritual awakening, to see the devotion of the people of this city and to see the deities of Radha Govinda. I know my godbrother Tamal Krishna Goswami, he took sannyas with Prabhupada in front of Radha Govinda Day and Prabhupada met some of the royalty when he was here. So. It's very dear to the Gaudiya Vaishnavas. Um, if you have an opportunity, you should come here. Just to see the beauty, the architecture. The whole city was constructed hundreds of years ago for the purpose of glorification of the deity. It's just so beautiful, the architecture, the way the town's laid out. You can see here where I'm sitting, it's unique. Somewhat maintained by the city authorities. So even for the purpose of tourism, <laughs> for the beauty of the eye and the atmosphere here you can come, but mostly to experience the deep devotion that comes 
from surrendering Atmanivedanam to these deities that were Radha Govinda were the personal deities of Sri Rupa Goswami. Their history is another, another talk, how Rupa Goswami found them, actually how they came here. It's a, it's a, I gave a two and a half hour class, <laughs> but they're here. So if you have the opportunity, Vrindavan's only four hours away. Come and drink the beauty of this town, drink the beauty of the devotion of the people of this town, and see these beautiful historic deities, Govindaji, who's 5,000 years old, and, and all their glory being worshipped here in the city of victory, Jaipur. Hare Krishna, a glorious Prabhupada. Hare 